G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video today. I'm just in the midst of getting set up for this wave. We're going to paint a wave today, all right? So I'll get my coffee out the way. It's not polite to drink in front of you people there. Sometimes I might move around like a stiff idiot, but I'm not an idiot. It's just that the microphone wire sometimes restricts me from moving like a normal human being. Now we're going to have, um, well firstly let's get the size of the canvas board out of the way so those people who like to know what size it is in inches or centimetres they can look at that. And up the screen there we've got the colours as well so you can write them down. Now it's always like I've said a good idea to get your friends over and have a video painting party with me. Put your big TV on, click it into YouTube watch me and paint along, watch the video and see what we're up against and paint along with it. All right, so I just wanna do a big smack in the face wave coming at you. So when it's on your canvas and you're hanging it on your wall and people are looking at it going, bullshit, that's a great wave. It's just a bloody big wave looking at you. It's nothing else. There's no background, there's no clouds, there's no sand dunes, it's just a bloody big wave, all right? And I reckon it'll be, quite achievable for you beginners okay and any advanced beginners you can add some extra detail if you know where your detail avenues are okay all right so get on over here a little bit closer so you can see what i'm doing and we'll just have a sticky beak at the canvas all right there's our canvas panel now the wave is going to have some um bottom foam i'm just using a pencil here yes it's a graphite lead pencil all right that's what i'm using and we want the say the sky roughly about here so i'll put my finger on the top there you can use a ruler if you want i'm just going to use this to do a really straight line all right somewhere about there and then the wave will come under it so we've got a wave just sort of coming over just chopping along the top of that water horizon because this wave is coming, it's virtually going to come down like that and whoosh up like this. But it'll have all the all the typical wave nonsense that you need. That can probably come up a little bit more, okay? <laughs> So down here I've got my craft white paint that I want to prime up my canvas panel with. My canvas panel's just so prime, but I don't care. I still like to do this. So I'll get my colours moving on my canvas. And I've got some phalo blue there ready to rock and roll in the sky. So I've given you a rough layout what's going to happen here. Um, I'll get this a bugger, just get it all on there. I'm going to prime the whole canvas panel up in this. Okay, just so... I've got something to paint on. I'm going to do the sky first, and then the ocean, and then the wave, and then the foreshore. Okay, so we'll, I've massaged that in all the um, canvas. Um, I'm not that keen on putting any retarder into the um, sky because we're not doing any clouds. So that's the white that's on the canvas is going to lighten this. And we're only having a small sky, so, oh, that's a bit dark. I'm just going to keep massaging it. There's my sky horizon line about here, right there. Nowhere else but there. All right, so, yeah, it's a bit, a bit dark. I'm lightening it down as I massage it into that white like that. So I might pick up a little bit of white on my brush, which is the flow white. I'll put that in there. This is not so heavy as titanium white. Titanium white would have really liked that up. So I just want a subtle blue sky there. Subtle. That's exactly what I want. Now, if you really want to get carried away, you can add clouds in there, but I'm not going to. All right, I'll just clean that same putter on a brush, my applicating brush. Now I'm using some French ultramarine blue, and naturally there's white on that canvas that's going to lighten this up so where did i 
want me horizon somewhere around here. Go a bit higher actually, about there. So this is going to be my water. So we get that there. All right, done. This is just the background of the ocean. There's not much motion in this part of the ocean. We come down to the, where the wave's going to be, okay? And this color here is not overly dark either. The main star in this painting is going to be the wave. I'll tell you what, the French ultramarine goes a bit on the purple side, doesn't it, eh? I've just picked up the rest of that phalo blue and see, yeah, we could sort of mix some of that with it as well to change the colour up. So it's not such a weird purple ocean out there, but this is not going to be seen much either, but it's there. You need things to be there, just so long as we've got a sky, a straight horizon line, and our ocean. That was very basic and straightforward, okay? Um, now, this is still wet. I want to map in the wave shape, and then we can start bringing that wave, and then the last bit will be that frothy, frothy foam at the front, all right? So get back over here. So the paint's wet, like I said, I've scratched in the top area of the wave and the bottom area where it's gonna meet the front froth, all right? So I'm gonna make this and I'm gonna keep it simple. First, before I start, I just wanna see, because everything's wet, I wanna, this bit under my line there, I'm just sort of washing it into the canvas a bit, just like that, wiping my brush. I wanna keep this wave, this painting, this tutorial, simple as, all right? And things can always be simple. And I wanna show you just the basic way to do this simple but effective wave. Now watch this video, you beginners, and learn by watching it maybe a couple of times, and then you know exactly what you're up against. So on my palette down here, I'll just change my paper towel. That one's getting full of dirt. I've got my turquoise, I've added some more flowing white craft paint, and I've got my cadmium yellow light. So now, like I said, we're gonna keep it simple. I wanna get this over here, because why I'm doing it over here, this is the main color I'm gonna use. I wanna lighten it up just a little bit, because that's gonna be my darker values, okay? Lighten it up a little bit. And this is what we're gonna map in, block in the wave with. So I've scratched in the line and I wanna get this to the top there, okay? To my line, roughly to that line there. Keeping the edge of it nice and reasonably sharp. It doesn't have to be too sharp because you're gonna put detail on that. Okay, you've done that. Come down to the bottom, do the same there, just like that, all right? Now you just want to paint all that in. So we're blocking that in. All right, we've blocked that in. See how easy that was? And I'm just sort of making it neat. Now I haven't dried nothing. I'm not going back up here anymore, but because I put the white student craft paint on with retarder, it's bleeding through these paints that I've put on and it's keeping them wet for a while. Now back down on the palette here, I'm gonna get some more of the darker one. So to keep it simple, I pretty much want a, the dark, the medium, and a lighter version. I'll show you what I, so let's just mix this color here up, just so you get an idea of the three tones, the three values I wanna use in this wave, okay? There we go. So we got dark, medium, and light. Now I've just got a flat brush, I've stamped the edge of it into the frothy soap in my water there. And I wanna get this, because I wanna put this on and sort of scrumble as I go, okay? For starters, I want a decent band coming right through the guts of it. So get this on there. Now see, it's wanting to blend in with that lighter color there because it's got retarder under there. Persevere with it. If you dry it, you might start having trouble. So just 
take your time. You might let it go a bit tacky. I want a reasonable solid band coming through the guts of this wave. And I've got it on an angle because my wave's on a bit of an angle. You'll see what I mean. So now I want to virtually push, do it in long strokes. See when you finish there you get this nonsense. You don't want nonsense in your painting. So I'm going to get that there like that. I'll darken it up here as well and the edges I'm just scrumbling into that blocked in tone. And I'm going to pick up just a bit of the French Ultramarine because I want to put just the the slightest bits here of the blue. Get some more. And I want to scrumble that in as well. If I can see it's very wet so it's pretty much disappearing. You might need to dry it. Now I'm just getting my brush and sweeping this in the motion of the wave. I'm not worried about doing the whole wave. I just want some blue there and probably some, I'm stamping it on just roughly where I want it. Because the paint's wet, I've got to stamp it on. I'm wiping the brush and then I want to brush stroke it in the shape of the wave. So we got these values there in our wave. Now I'm getting some of the white and mixing with there so we get that lighter value. I mean, I've cleaned that brush, the same brush, and I'm um, using that one. And we want some lighter values in our wave. So pretty much here, we want to get it on, just come to about here somewhere. You got that band of darkness and it came up here. You want to sort of tessellate it through there. So you still got some of the base color there. You don't want to kill all the base color. And lightly get it in there and even if you wanted to grab another brush and scrumble the edges together just so you got a beautiful transition at the end where the two colors meet okay and depending how dry you or wet your paint is like I'll put some on and I'll scrumble it in if you let it dry too much it's not going to scrumble for you well, we've got some lighter stuff coming here, so watch. I've put it on, scrumbling it. We want just some pockets of it in here. So I'm, I'm going to the shape of the, um, uh, what do you call it, the wave. I'll scrumble that in. Scrumble that into the white stance is because that paint's wet. See, I've pretty much knocked it out, so I've got to put it back again. Oh no, it's still there. And if I feel I've got to scramble that back, I will. Now here, I want to sort of do some actions like that. Not too much, I don't want to destroy the painting, but I want to get some light values just sort of coming through there. Just like that. Lightly lightly does it. Get some up in there. I've just given that a slight dry. It's not dry a lot. We'll come back here because if anything I want some... I'm following the shape of the wave there. If anything, I'm trying to get a band coming right up through there. But if you see a wave, to make it not so technical to paint, follow the shape of the wave and where the lights are and just use your light, medium, dark. And I've just tinted some blue in there, the color of the um, sky, just to give it some real depth as well. And then work out what I'm doing here now. I'm sort of blending, scrumbling it together here and there, trying to do it in an artistic way bring some of this and then what you can do is sort of add some lighter values if you need it see I've worn that paint off the brush and if there's still too much on there I'm wiping it on a towel and then I'm gonna sort of blend those in the motion of the wave as well 
And if you've got to come back over some of the darks, so be it. Now, if we lighten some of that, but there's even, I'll just go to the very corner of that color and get a real, uh, an even lighter value of that. And like later on, I want to add some even lighter value, not too much, you don't want to overdo it. And then if you need to, soften them up as well. Okay, over here we're getting some sort of medium value action in here. I'll put it on and I'll try and, we'll see, I've, I've put too much on. I've got to do it again, my paint's drying now. I want to scrumble it, blend it together. I want some that sort of action you get in the wave as it's coming up. See, this paint's still wet there. If I press too heavy on there, it's going to lift it. So we're trying to get these scallopy values here. I'll put a few on and scrumble them down into that color. A bit more. And I'm, as I'm doing everything, I'm slowly getting the shape of that wave in as well. Just slightly sit all that down. That's still very wet. I've picked up the dark again because I've lost some of the darker aspects of my wave, so I want to get them back. So, because you don't want to kill your dark where it meant to be dark. If anything, this was supposed to be dark here, so I can tell, okay, I've killed it a bit. I'm coming back over it and putting it in there, just like that. Grab my blending brush and then carefully blend that back into the wave. I'll have a look in the monitor and just see how that's looking. I've gone and dried this a bit more because it wasn't quite dry enough. Now I want to, before I put the light wave crashing over here, I want to get these darker values at this end stamped in as well. Somewhere here and I want to add the green as well. So I virtually want to do the bottom half of the wave before I start putting the, the top detailed section in, okay? Just grab the littlest of yellow onto there. Now let's see where we are. Okay, so let's wet that brush a bit so it's going to move. And we want some of the, the lighter value in there. And lighten that up. A bit more yellow. Because I want some of that green in there. Not too much, but enough to show it. But probably we want some of this around here. Not too much, just a, just a hint. Just something you can softly type of do that with blend it scrumble it on that angle of the dangle and we'll go, before this color runs out I might put some of it down here as well because this is pretty much all the blocking in of this wave scrumble that into there I can bring some of that darker color back just to marry it together bit more I could see I want a bit more here because they've got to add some whiter highlights to this as well scrumble the edges in merge them together that's it to merge that a bit more there go into there see and where else can I use some of this probably a hint of it over here as well Some bits scraggling up through here. Just the colours of the ocean wave. Now I'm going to highlight this before we put the front detail in again as well. That's it. <laughs> getting the dark before I finish off with the lights and I'm trying to neaten this section here up because sometimes you need to step back and have a look and see where the bits 
that need tuning up need tuning up and go to them and fix them up before you finish your painting that's all oh, that's a bit dark don't worry like I said you can always lighten back over it see now if anything I'm adding the the shape of the wave strokes in my brushes movements get some dark in there still don't want to kill all that dark under there how's that looking not too bad now I'm just finishing it off with that cadmium yellow light mixed with the turquoise a bit just to get this value of green happening. I want some sort of coming through there a bit. I've done enough of the darks. I want some of this here as well. Keeping the shape of the wave in your strokes. Just sort of hint going over the dark a bit. All right. Now I've got my lighter colour, the dark, medium and light colour, and my scrumbling brush. Now we've pretty much got everything in there. We want to get just the highlights where we want them. So we want sort of something coming in the wave. I'm going to put it there and scrumble it. Let's see how we go. Not too much though. And if you have, like I said, if you have overdone it, grab your dark colour and sink it back. So we, that, that's a bit, that's a bit loud. I want some distinctive scallopy bits here back because we lost them all before I put that green in there so we'll get these values in there leave some dark in between them so you're pretty much putting like leopard spots and blending them up see like that there that's that bit done we'll probably put the teeniest in here just giving it some light values over here so we got where else have we got we got some some of these are lines as well they're not just scallopy dots but keep them in that shape of your wave okay see what I've done there and I want to carefully sink them back not blobbing them out and not washing them in too deep. Cool, that's exactly what I'm after. We're after that sort of motion and highlight in our ocean. Try not to... What you can do, I've done it a lot before I started filming, is I'm painting something and I've got my mobile phone switched onto the camera mode and I, when you look at your painting through the camera, it gives you a brilliant way of analysing your painting by squinting your eyes. Want something down here. So try that out. Do some painting and look through, look at it through your phone camera. It's beautiful. You get a good idea of where some enhancements need doing or anything like that. Now that mixture I just had, I've just added more white to it. Now I'm going to get these different values scrambled in there. I don't know if I want to get a different size brush and just sit that paint on there or scramble it. I'm going to look in my monitor in a minute and it'll tell me which way to look. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to get a smaller brush. Some little snotty little thing and I'll see what that does. And I just want to... Yeah, that's it. Adding some highlights in all that stuff that I've just put on. Where are we? Just a yeah, this is a better brush. Now don't overdo it with this highlight. You could kill the thing. This is just not white highlight, it's just highlighting those some of those lighter values you just stuck in there in certain areas. Mainly around these scallopy things that we did there. Because it's sort of a light coming through the back of it. Now we want to just put the foam here and that's it. So we've got it blocked in, highlighted and dark toned. So I'm going to use a little flogger here and picking up just titanium white. Oh, actually I'll get a bit of it and I just want to slightly dirty at the littlest bit. So where's that light colour? Here it is here. I'll just get the, the littlest bit of that 
just to contaminate this bit because you want your white at the end of a wave to be snapping bright where you can highlight that white with pure white and I'll pretty much map in first so there's the dark I want to I want to keep some dark there and I'm going to map this in so you'll get an idea where we're coming with it okay and with this hump here I want to I want to use that so we're going to come down there okay just like that where else are we now the rest of it is just pretty basic the top of the wave and the we just got to detail this to the cows come on so we're just mapping it in like so to the edge don't see I just did a big blob there don't do that now some of this is gonna some of it's frothing in the air now with this line that I'm putting on the what we're virtually doing we're putting this on and then we might see where bits need shadowing up underneath and then we're gonna spark it with the pure white over the top okay I want bits in the water there in the air just muck around like you're an artist if you think like an artist you paint like an artist there's nothing to it eh? it's great all right so you can see what's happening now it's all I won't turn the camera off and edit anything out. I want you to see all this as it happens. And this here, I'll get to there. Just let me get to there. Don't rush. Are you? Not, you tell your students not to rush, and here you are rushing. So I'm just sort of any old way. You know, when you stand back, you're going to see a wave. That's the main thing. All right. Now I'm going to turn the camera off just to move. Okay, I've moved my camera. Now, hang on, let's get the blob off the brush. I've got to load the brush up properly. I've turned my brush around because this bit of the wave is coming down, okay? So if anything, I want to get the main break of it, like here. And, you know, you can scratch bits up just like that. Just like that. That's it. That's Don't muck with it. Not too much. I'm getting the... Where are we? We can... This line here, you don't want to go through there because that's, if anything, let's just show you what we're doing now. I'll just paint these in like that. They look a bit stupid at the moment, but they're going to be hidden with all the, um, this stuff here. So we've got this going on. Load your brush up appropriately as you need it. Don't let it wear out and not go back to it and fix it. And this is sort of spraying up into there and why I wanted this paint contaminated you'll see when we add the white to it okay and some of this might need some more darkening up in there just I'll just show you I'm just picking up some of that green the lighter color there just like you want some of this in that water as well probably about here somewhere I'm sort of scratching it up as I go as well. I'm thinking like a wave. I had dinner with a wave the other night and they're pretty... I was watching them as we were eating and talking and they sort of gave me ideas for this wave, how to paint them, you know. So it's good to date your subjects at times. Here we go. Got that lighter bit in there. You need that. So if anything, now we're putting the darker values in this side of the wave. Get some of it up there. Easy does it, easy does it. Look at your monitor, look at your, get your camera at your painting and have a look at it and see where everything's working and where it needs attention. Because a lot of this is dotty up there. It's going to, it's spraying, this bit's spraying in the air as it's flapping over. Some of it over the water area there just like that now if you can't grasp this painting you've tried it and you're thinking it's not working for me don't give up that's all right just practice what you've got to do because a lot of paintings need practice and if you're not a seasoned painter don't expect to just pull off a painting at the drop of a hat you've got to practice procedures okay now we're going to put this white back onto there and this white that I'm using is not this craft paint. It's not the student paint, okay? 
This is titanium out of my tube. Now I'm trying to get some dots because this bit here I want sort of, you know, as it's frigging around itself over this lap, as it's lapping over here, it's dropping spray everywhere. And that tinted colour we did here is going to allow for these white bits. I could probably use that deer foot, get some white freckles up here because that's what I'm after. I might come back with me deer foot just to get some detailed dots in the air. And see this white is getting ready to pop. This isn't the pure white, this is the contaminated white, okay? There's just some bits here. Don't do all here because that's different. Okay, I've grabbed me deer foot because we need a lot of spray. Yeah, look at that. That's it. I can control this. We want spray over here, dotting in the sky, off the wave. And there's a lot of... We want some of it coming up here as well, just in the... above there. I'll come down here a bit. We've got bits just chopping up above the height of the wave. Just the tiniest bits under there. Not too much. Don't overdo it. Just like that. Now we'll put the pure white on there. Now I'll clean that deer foot. And I'm grabbing some white. Let's see if, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. We just want some of this really bright. Don't kill all that just contaminated white. We just want bits of this really whiter than others. Just like that. A bit here, a bit of intense white here. Oh, some over here. I don't know if that camera's picking it up. I'll have to look on the playback to see if it is. Just bits along here, periodically, just bits. Not the whole lot, just bits. Okay, and some of this can have... I can just see the difference. That contaminated white probably would have been nicer if I did contaminate it a bit more. But we always learn, eh? All right, now we're going to just go to the froth at the front and that's it. I've got some of my toning grey out of the tube. I want to get some of this and just grey this up a bit because we want to be able to highlight some of this as well. Okay, I'm using a flathead brush. I'll get the grey up to that broken band of the watercolour there and I'll just quickly block this in down the bottom. Now, this is pretty much the same what I did to the bottom of the seagull painting if you if those of you that saw my seagull now we just want to sort of shape it in there a bit so I want to get some just not too much just sort of don't come up your wave too much this is going to be froth I'll put just a bit more gray with that because we learned at the top that this the contaminated grey white wasn't enough because some of this I just want a hint of the ultramarine blue in this as well and then we can crack this where is that ultramarine any left I just want to sort of get little bits in between here just like that somewhere that's it we got the grey French ultramarine it's frothing there and then we can fix this up with the pure white. I might put a little bit more darker grey in that. And because that deer foot works so well for getting frothy stuff happening, I'm going back to the deer foot. Alright, so I've virtually got contaminated grey white paint with a touch 
of see there I'll sink this back down now I've got this brush I feel more powerful with this brush I'll wipe it pick up the gray and we've got some there happening you could have just done this you didn't have to add the French ultra if you don't feel that you don't want to I just thought it's going to add some depth into this froth there we go I'm going to dry that that's dry now I just want to sink the rest of this back with the pure white All right, we can pretty much dog around with that till the cows come home. I'll just put a autograph somewhere here, somewhere. Hopefully I can get it subtle. I like my autographs to be subtle, but sometimes they stick out like snot. Anyway, we'll get this here. I'm just using paint this time. All right, and we'll whack a frame on this as well. See how she looks in a in a frame, eh? Yeah, I like putting the frame on there. There you go. Look at that. There you are. That's not too shabby. We've got a, a simple but an effective looking wave, okay? It could have been a bit smaller, maybe, but that's just the way it turned out. It's a piece of art and it doesn't look like snot either. I'm liking it, and I'm pretty sure you avid followers of mine should like it as well. So if you like that, thumbs up and tell your friends, but if you don't, thumbs down and tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.